Okay, speaking of food. Yes, we have Gary Thibault here. And uh, Gary, welcome to the show. Thank you. I can't believe that you're actually here because we had Marcus Rothkranz on a couple months ago and he was talking about this uh, mythical person in Etobicoke that would uh, just eat uh, stuff that grew and, within a and, mile of his house. And honestly, I thought it was a figment, a figment of his imagination. imagination. And you are the guy. And you are real. Well, uh, you know, I talk to a lot of people um, about how they can sustain themselves locally without buying very much. Like my food bill for uh, my family of four is basically less than $30 a week all year round. I have trouble oh. to spend $30 in a grocery store. And you live in Etobicoke, so yes, you live in right here in Toronto. Yes. Yes, I have people come to my house and I'll walk them around the backyard, you know. Mostly I bring people to a farm I have north of the city about an hour away in a little town called Terra Nova and I teach them. And if they want to learn, if they get in touch with me uh, through my webpage or because of this DVD which people have been doing, um, they can come and spend time with me, uh, donate what they can afford, $25, $30, spend the day working with me and helping out and they'll get to learn more than their brain can handle. So, okay, but do you have food on this farm? Do we need a farm outside of the city in order to do what you're doing? No. Okay. No, you don't. Okay. Uh, I can show people that in my Etobicoke backyard, my gardening space would be less than this room size. Three little gardens with less than this room size. And I'm barely growing a garden there this year because I'm doing more stuff at my farm for other reasons. And I'll never eat all of the food that's growing in my backyard. I could feed the entire neighborhood. Okay, so if I lived in an apartment... There's all kinds of plants around your apartment building and local parks around. They don't spray anymore, but if you use some common sense, you'll know what a healthy plant is and versus a plant that looks sick. And any weed that's growing in the crack of the sidewalk or along the road has the intrinsic factor, acids in it, and the ability to resist all of the chemical compounds in our environment, otherwise it wouldn't exist. So when you consume it, it actually helps to rebuild your gut lining because that's the purpose of weed. Weed plants are basically, according to farmers, a plant out of place. Right? Right. And so weed plants have tap roots, most of them, that grow very deep in the ground. So if you took red clover, for example, it grows a root up to 125 feet in the ground. Uh, and plus, uh, dandelions will grow the same distance into the ground. So I laugh at people with their little dandelion digger and they're putting chemicals on it trying to kill the dandelions because I've got pictures, if I had my laptop here I could show you pictures, where I've just placed dandelions out of a sand pile on the roof, of, on the hood of my truck and took a snapshot. And you'll see dandelion roots from three and a half feet long with spider veins three and a half feet wide and wow. it's just one plant showing on the surface and then you've got other plants at different various lengths. So what the purpose of these plants is, is they're taking undisturbed minerals out of the ground. And so when you look at people's ecology in their own body and health, and I do blood analysis, you know, I'm, I'm a nutritionist and I have a dark field microscope, so, you know, you'll see, I'll have people come to me thinking they're eating the best foods ever and they're eating superfoods and imported stuff and everything. And when you look at their blood and their blood is actually so messed up, you wonder how they walk to your chair. So because they're basically tired or not energized to the level that I'm energized. And I see the same respect when people come and work with me at my farm or people have volunteered to go wilderness camping on property I have outside of Sudbury. And you know, they are these 25 year old guys uh, with muscles bigger than my arms, uh, and my you legs. And me up with one arm. You know, the, <laughs> that's not really hard to do. <laughs> You're not that heavy. <laughs> well, I'm heavy enough. Uh, I know. You can't do it. Yes, I can. So, you know, you see these people that are so physically looking strong, but they have no endurance and no stamina. And, I, and they notice that when they're in an environment where it's a wilderness environment, the flies and the bugs and, you know, horse flies as long as my thumb here uh, that will bite through a bug shirt and take a chunk out of you like the blister in my hand. Uh, they have no resistance and the flies are attacking them like crazy mm -hmm. where they're not even bothering me and they'll ask me like you know how come the flies aren't biting you I say well what are you consuming are you consuming foods that are imported full of chemicals and sprays and pesticides even though you think they're organically grown like you had some grapes a grape 
of any kind you buy in the store today is the most highly chemically sprayed food on earth. Bananas are the most genetically modified food on earth. They don't even have seeds anymore. If we look at fertility rates in North America, okay, versus anywhere else in the world, we have the lowest fertility rates and people are eating seedless foods. So if food cannot produce life, how do you expect it to That's give you life? That's a very good point. Same thing like people eat eggs that are unfertilized. You know, it can't produce life. So how can it produce life in you? Energy. Okay, so then, Gary, what do you eat? What does a day in the life of Gary's diet? Okay, now, this might astound some people. I don't eat as much meat as most people would. I eat some meat maybe once or twice a week. Well, for $30 a week to feed a family of four, I guess you couldn't buy that much, right? No, well, I do my own hunting, and, and I have okay. the properties to be able to do that. So okay. I harvest okay. myself, okay? okay? And I think if you're going to consume something, you should be harvesting it yourself. Awesome. And I once read in a book uh, by a, a really good outdoor survivalist named Tom Brown. He said his teacher, mentor, this uh, native uh, chief said that when you can feel the same way about harvesting a deer as the plant you just consumed, you are truly in one with nature. Because people will go out and kill plants and vegetation and think, oh, you know, I'm not doing any harm. Well, you know, you drive a car, you walk on the earth, uh, you have waste. Uh, you know, one of the things Marcus focused, uh, focused on uh, a lot on there was the fact that I recycle. I've been recycling when people didn't understand the work. Uh, that's one of the ways I make some income. I mean, I felt it was a way of helping the environment and helping myself at the same so time. So what do you do? I recycle metals, uh, cardboard, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, different electronics, um, you know, I just pick it up for free and turn it into money. And then I take that money to do projects on my farm. Okay. So okay, so what does so back to the the diet a, a day in the life of I don't consume a diet. And uh, neither, neither does nature. Uh, nature oh. eats by season and they eat a way to live. So I eat a way of life. So for example, um, I eat four eggs easy over in the morning with some vegetables, mostly wild greens and that maybe you got a, in your backyard? Yes, that okay. I pick fresh from my backyard and I'll steam them and stir fry them. And um, I'll eat some raw honeycomb, bee pollen, and propolis, which I, in the process of having my own bees, I'll eat uh, seeds like flax, uh, sunflower, um, pumpkin seeds, uh, some chia seeds. I have a few things that are imported, but very little. So 90% of what I consume is basically right in a uh, mild place. Can I just ask you about the bees? Are you keeping the bees at your house in Etobicoke? Uh, no, I'm going to be doing that at my farm. What's going on with the bees? We just heard about all those bees that were lost somewhere well, in Well, you know, big corporations that are in the pharmaceutical businesses and pharmaceuticals are making all kinds of natural and unnatural pesticides. Monsanto. And yeah, Monsanto is one of the biggest ones, but Monsanto is very bad because they're not really good for the environment. They control 98% of the seed population yeah. or the seed production of the world. So, and the other 2% is controlled by four companies. So Monsanto could technically starve any country on earth by just stop giving them seeds. They just could. They could instantly shut the seed production down to anybody on earth and basically all the grain farmers and canola farmers, they'd be bankrupt instantly. So they could do that. And the biggest problem is what they're putting in the seeds. They're Roundup Ready and they're genetically modified strains. Now they've got a type of nicotine from tobacco and they've basically made it to extend its shelf life. So when they spray it on a plant, it basically stays on the plant and doesn't leave the plant for months and months and months on end. And it basically will penetrate the seed and go into the further crops of that seed. Well, the problem with nicotines is most people don't know they're the family of B vitamins, nicotides. And B1 and nicotine are so identical in the human body that basically our body will take and bring it in thinking it's vitamin B1. And anybody who knows a little bit about the digestion, you can't absorb any carbohydrate without vitamin B1. So now you're taking these poisons and where are they going to go? They're going to go into every fat cell in your body because that's what your body stores as energy. And I also laugh at people trying to go on a so-called diet to lose fat because your cells 
that you were born with, fat cells, can never be taken out of your body. As soon as you take them out, your body will replace the exact genetic code you had in the first place. And most people are going on these diets are only losing water, dehydration, not really losing body structure, right? Because they're eating the wrong foods. So their body's building up full of garbage. So, okay. So, when... Let me ask, okay, so you, you said that these pesticides on, on dandelions and that kind of thing. If, so if I were to go to a park, could I pick dandelions? Could yes. I, now, how would I know it's safe? And the other question I have to ask, and it's, it's funny, but it's not, how about dogs walking by and peeing on the vegetables? Well, or the I'll wolf? speak to your lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll quote Marcus Rothkranz when he says uh, urine is water-soluble. So I never worry about that. I mean, I... Do you, I, do you go home and wash your stuff anyway? No. I walk oh outside my, my backyard in Etobicoke and I go to my farm where there's all kinds of wildlife from... 200-pound uh, deer uh, that would be dressed meat, never mind live, and I have seven-foot deer fence all around my garden. Otherwise, there's no way I would have a garden okay. in the place where I'm at in Terra Nova. The deer just eat everything. They'll even eat the tops off potatoes, which is toxic to a human. Okay? Okay. That's they what happened to me. I went out today, and the potatoes I planted, <laughs> something got out of last night. Uh, well. More than likely, if you looked at the cut marks on the, th on the plant, if there was just like chopped off straight, yeah. it's deer. Well, I doubt it. Not my neighborhood. <laughs> You'd be surprised. There's lots of deer around southern Ontario, especially even in Toronto. All around my house, there's deer walking up down the street. You know, I saw a fox on Sherburn and Bloor one time. I believe that. Yeah. There's lots of wildlife in Toronto. So, okay, so, so how about the pesticides? I don't well, worry about the pesticides, especially on the weeds, because the weeds such have such a root system deep in the ground, they're bringing undisturbed minerals, and they are bringing up resistance to your body. Okay. And they do. So I'll give you a concrete example of that. Uh, because I do a lot of studying and research, and to do with blood analysis and stuff like that. I've been in courses where there's been lots of medical doctors, natural medical doctors, um, you know, nurses in emergency room things, and they want to learn about blood and analysis and stuff like that. And most of them are eating conventional so-called diets, where it's raw food or vegetarian, or they're eating their own particular way. And I'm eating by season the way I do, and it seems like my blood the person that's doing the running of the course keeps pointing out my blood to everybody else. I've mm. had people just saying, look at his blood, and showing it on the slide over and over again because they just couldn't believe that my blood was that clean. And you can feel my energy. Mm -hmm. And I have this kind of energy all the time. And I'm 56, uh, you know, and I, people have told me from what they see about my blood, they say there'll be no reason why I won't live to 156. So I don't know if I'm doing everything the right way, but something tells me I am because I went from a very sick human being at 38 to 40 years old. I didn't think I'd live to 40. And the doctors wanted to cut me open and look inside because they couldn't tell me from any test what was wrong with me. And I basically went back to my native culture, my own way of doing things and the way some of the stuff that I was raised and my grandmother taught me. And I started eating all my natural vegetation around me. And so then I did a lot of research. So you started 40, 38, 40? Yeah. Okay, and you're 56 now? Yes. So anybody can do it any time in their life then? I totally agree with that. Okay, I have so it's not too late, Hugh. No. It's not too late. <laughs> I have people that have come to me uh, in really, really bad physical condition, been to the doctors, uh, not getting any answers, and I teach them some basic stuff, and, um, you know, okay, the so body starts to so, heal. Okay, okay, you want to ask a question? Well, okay. you, seem, you seem pumped to ask your question. You go ahead, I'll ask it later. Okay. Um, so if you could tell somebody, other than you know, watching this DVD. Hold it up. I can't reach it. Um, this one right here. So other than that, what can I do? What's the you know, top three things I can do right now, today, go home um, to, to live and look like and have your blood? Okay. First thing is hydration, proper hydration. So what you'd want to do is drink a liter of drink a liter of water. Tap water? No. Uh, boil and filter the water first. Boil. Now can can I just boil tap water? 
I, yeah, you can just boil tap water, but I would filter it first through like at least a one micron bitter, bitter filter that sits on your tap. Will that, will that get rid of the fluoride? fluoride? No, but the boiling will then. Because what happens is you'll always have some calcium oxide and aluminum oxide go through the filter. And when you boil water, it makes calcification occur. Otherwise, if you look in the bottom of a kettle, any kettle you have, glass mm. or, or ceramic or uh, stainless steel is what I'd recommend. I wouldn't even recommend plastic. But after you boil water for four or five days in a kettle, just do a little experiment. Throw a little bit of vinegar inside with yeah. the water yeah. and boil the water. And when you dump it out, you'll have all the scale come off. Yeah. So the calcification process will remove the fluoride and the chlorine. And then any heavy particles, you'll have a Brita filter that sits in your fridge and this is very inexpensive. Anybody can do this and just pour your water that's cooled down in that and you just pour it then from a, to a glass jar. And the pouring and boiling action does the same thing that your environment does. So water in your environment is boiled nine times before it falls as rain at 1,000 foot elevations falling. Oh and in a riverbed before water gets to the ocean, it goes in and out of sunlight back and forth. So ultraviolet rays kill all of the bacteria and through the process of going downstream it's oxygenated again. Okay, so do I, I filter first, then boil it? Yes. Or, okay, so I filter it through, not a Brita, you said, through some... Yeah, so yeah through a Brita, a okay. one micron Brita. That's the one that screws on your tap. Okay, okay, so... That's a pressurized one. Okay, so I filter, so it's always filtered then if you have yes. it on your tap. Okay, yeah. so then you boil the water. Right. So that's, you drink that water. Right. Okay, that's number one. What are three things we could do? Well, the important thing is to drink that kind of water in the morning before you would kind of leave your bed. Okay. So, so it's important when you drink it as well. Yes, because you want, if you really want to hydrate your body, the best way is you want to get the water back to your colon because that's where liquids are hydrated into your body from your back, right? And so most people don't know this, that when you lay down and sleep at night, there's two valves, one at the top of your stomach and one about a foot to 18 inches in your small intestine. And those two valves, when you lay down, they open so that air can flow through your body properly. Okay. So you're not a closed system and digest food and make pressure. Uh, so okay. basically, when you sit up and don't put pressure on your feet, what happens then is water can pass through the system but after you get up and start walking around, you try to drink a glass of water, you're full. So basically, you don't really hydrate your body. And so by starting that, you start to really hydrate your body and get body water right into cellular structure. So first thing I do in the morning when I get up is have a glass of that water. How much? Just one glass? A liter of water is the best. A liter first yes. thing in the morning? Before you get out of bed. If you start trying it, you won't believe it. You'll drink a liter of water without even... And you know so what? You have I, it in your I've done you... this, and you feel fantastic before you even get up. Yes. It hydrates your body. So you have to have it there before you, when you go to bed, then? Yeah, yes. you put it on your nightstand. Wow. And you start with a quantum scalar energy wand. You could do that, too. Which has many purposes. <laughs> okay. Getting back to plants, like you were asking me, um, I basically... Um, eat from dandelions to plantain to lamb's quarters. Uh, lamb's quarters is basically the most nutritious plant on earth. It has every mineral and vitamin lamb's in it except quarters. B12. Where do you get that? It grows everywhere. It originally came from the Persian Empire. Okay. And it's spread around the world now. It grows okay. everywhere. Okay. On okay. earth. There's no continent it doesn't grow on. So go pick the veg or whatever green stuff you have. Yes. That's and number two. Basically, um, eat it when it's fresh, steamed or cooked or raw. And uh, then you can also dry different parts of these plants when you learn. You can dry okay. the seeds and stuff like that to add to your food in the wintertime. Okay. And um, oh. then there's all kinds of root vegetables and certain plants that grow that you can't eat the tops, but the roots you can eat. So you can store those and dry those for wintertime use. Wow. There's tons of stuff. And uh, you know, so I planted a garden this year. Right. Gary, and there was already a bunch of wild weeds growing and every year there's like a different set of weeds right like I don't know what it is it's just nature you know some years I noticed on a farm a couple years ago there was a lot of uh, wild uh, parsnip which is very toxic with the uh, but anyways so there's all these weeds right but then I got rid of most of them and planted but wild parsnip is not toxic it's water hemlock that's toxic 
Well, it's the stuff. It's that when you touch it, it, it it's like poison ivy when you when you get on your skin, though. Well, this po stuff. Okay, poison ivy. Uh, oh, you mean uh, nettles? That's wild hogweed. I think it might also. Oh be no, hogweed is uh, kind of toxic. Yeah, you got to be careful with yeah. that. See now, I see. How would I know that if that were in the backyard? Well, you kind of know pretty well if you've got giant hogweed. It looks like a big elephant ear plant, and it's very unusual. And if you call somebody from the city environment, they won't even get rid of it for you. They'll tell you it's your responsibility. You can't burn it. It's your problem. It creates cyanide. Yeah. Poisoning. It's bad for when you. you burn it. It's a very dangerous how, plant. How popular is this in our uh, in It's our pretty city well or? widespread throughout North America now. It's been here for a couple hundred years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I guess, I mean, we could ask you, we could probably sit here all day, Forever. Gary, and ask you about these, you know, what's Keep good, what's not good, what do we do? But I guess most of the information that we want is in this video. Or well, Marcus or, filmed me for two days. There are six hours of training there. And uh, there is happen to be uh, my books coming out in about another couple of months for sure that I'm going to be uh, in conjunction to do with this so teach people more basic stuff so that they can really really learn easier yeah and there's a couple of gentlemen coming up from Washington DC to film me and create another set of DVDs uh, on my behalf so they want more people to learn great well, well can we, you come uh, back when you're done yeah we'd me? love to see the book absolutely that would be great okay wow all right and in the meantime if people want to get in touch with you or get their hands on the videos or uh, they can send me an email to Gary at Gary .com or go to my webpage Gary .com. and that's Gary with two R's yes Gary -T -I -B -B -O. at IBBO okay Gary at Gary .com. Well, yes. and and the website of course Gary .com, right yeah. Wow, this is amazing yes it's amazing stuff I again we could talk to you forever I just want I, I mean you're just a walking living library on this stuff Speak to your lawyer, Sandra. Okay. I guess He's that's it for the show. my lawyer, I'll tell you. All right. I guess that's it for the show. Okay. Awesome show. Yep. We had amazing guests. Thank you guys. Wow. I feel so uplifted in so many ways. And a special Thank you, thanks Nikki. to Nikki Hayes. Thank you, Nikki. Creating a world that works for everyone. Thank you, Nikki.